turn to gray Didn't I love you enough? Didn't I show you things? And how can you think that I cannot see That you're giving up, giving up on me Telling me the whole time this is a good thing Why you steady walking away from me Oh, oh, oh. I need you to love me I need you to show me you care I need you to listen when I talk And walk when I walk And maybe we can try this Tracy, always live, always local, always entertaining and educating South Florida. Celebrating over 30 years, Hot Talk continues to be the pulse of South Florida. Relevant, engaging, informative. Now, here's your host, Jill Tracy. Uh. 
Yeah! Dara. God. Welcome, Diva. Hello, hello. I'm so happy to be back. I'm so happy to have you back and good evening South Florida I am chill Tracy thank you for being here tonight on Hot Talk South Florida's number one community affairs show each and every Sunday night from 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. we highlight the achievements and we discuss the challenges of our community with you and an engaging panel of guests and i invite you as always to have a seat perhaps a cocktail and join the conversation 888-550-9105 my jewels tonight are the melodic sounds of miss star carter back in the building I want to say, wow, what was it, maybe like two years ago, the first time you were on Hot Talk? Two years ago. Ah, now you're out on the road on your first nationwide tour. Yes, Queen. Congratulations. Thank you so much. I'm so happy for you. Thank you. So now this is your, what, what are we on, your third stop? Are we your third this stop? This is my, so Florida in general is my first stop, but mm -hmm. um, I visited Fort Myers first, and mm -hmm. I've been in Miami for the past five days, I think. Okay. You did the HBCU picnic today? Yesterday. Yesterday. Yes, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah Matthew great. Pigott was here last week. Yeah. And uh, we talked about it. So that's awesome. So where are you off to from here? You're here for a few more days? No, I'm tomorrow. I'm here until tomorrow. And then um, I'll be headed up to Philly. And then oh. New York, Quebec, back to New York. And I'm Atlanta. so happy for you. Thank, Thank you. you so much for making me one of your stops. Oh, absolutely. On uh, On this journey. Yeah, I look forward to coming to see you uh, very, very soon. Um, Please do. Yes, indeed. But you're going to be here for the rest of the show. So um, if you want to give Dara a call, questions, comments, 888-550-9105. Uh, she's going to be here, you know, just like bringing it together all night long. And um, we have come, <laughs> we have gathered here today <laughs> <laughs> to get through this thing called Miami Dade. <laughs> uh, listen, uh, Gordon Eric Knowles, my dear friend, how are you, sir? I'm wonderful, Jill. Great Thank to be you. here with you. Yes, indeed. Thank you so much for coming. And only you could get my dear friend, <laughs> William D.C. Clark, back in the building. <laughs> I've not seen D.C. in, like, I think that, that sh we had a crazy show. I just re yeah, I just remember Bill Diggs, like, standing on the chair, <laughs> trying to get some attention. Uh, it's been a while. But how are you, sir? I'm doing great, Jill. How are you? I am blessed and highly favored to have you. I'm glad that you're well, here. Thank you. Thank you. Next to you is one of my favorite people people in the whole world as well miss daniela Bless i just you. i just have to call her daniela for change ah. <laughs> <laughs> how are you babe i'm well in yourself i am great you know what daniela i just can't thank you enough whenever the you know whenever the the siren call goes out you're like listen okay let's talk about it <laughs> let's, let's make it happen <laughs> so thank you so much for being here Anytime. this is um yeah as, as a matter of fact <clears throat> uh do i have my wait a minute before i uh I introduced my other guest. I, I will. <clears throat> let's start this off. Uh, I want to show you the irony of how uh, things that uh, need to be changed never ever go away until you deal with them. Access to capital, issues with credit, and just having a foresight on how to move forward. Our community wants to have a say in the economic landscape here in South Florida. However, having a lack of access to capital. Daniela sent me that in 2015. We are four years later mm. about to have the exact same conversation. Mm. Can I hear the choir say amen? <laughs> Thank you. Choir say damn. Yeah. Thank you. I don't know if it's amen. Or not. Ah, ah. Yeah. Like, what, what, the, what, what, what did you put on here? What the, right? The, what, yeah. yeah. Duff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What the fudge? Yeah. Uh, 2015. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, next to Daniela, Ruben Roberts is in the building. How are you, sir? Okay, so the, the barbershop has moved to the other side of the room. <laughs> and uh, we're going to take turns. Hey, Mark Young, how are you, sir? Uh, we're going to just kind of like uh, move this around because 
uh, as the, the ladies of Alpha Kappa Alpha would say, this is a serious matter. Uh, Ruben, how are you, sir? I am well, Jill. How are you? Today? I am I am great. Thank you. Thank you for answering uh, Gordon Eric Knowles' call. Yes. And and clearly, only <laughs> Eric Gordon Eric Knowles could get John Dixon in this building. I'm trying to get John Dixon <laughs> in here but four years. Well, you got me. How are you? I'm doing great. Good to see you. It's a pleasure to see you as well. Thank you so much for coming. So let's just get right to it. Uh, my e my email started to catch fire. Uh, I I want to say it was it had to have been Friday night early, uh, early Saturday, with the piece from the Miami New Times. First of all, uh, we'll we'll come back to that how they broke the story um, later. But uh, the headline: Miami Dade can't afford to study racial disparity anymore. The commissioners say so. I'm gonna. Uh, who wants to start? Like, how did we? How did we get here? Well, Jill, I I, I think I'll start because okay. I, I reached out to you and I reached out to DC, reached out to um, Ruben, reached mm -hmm. out to John when I saw that um, article that was sent to me by another associate that has we've been dealing with this disparity issue for some quite some time like you just said uh, 2015 was that video and um, when you see a commentary that says that the commission has made a decision to no longer or do not want to spend the money to deal with the disparity issue in our community that's a slap in the face to our community so that's why we're here tonight so okay so the purpose the 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 organization can you just kind of like lead everybody um through who the mdeat is and uh how they have gotten to this place md mdeat what did i say you, uh, n m okay. m d e a t m as in mary uh, okay john go. let's start uh, with john, you john yeah MD, uh, Miami-Dade Economic Alpha Trust is a organization where we look at a variety of core areas in Miami-Dade County, being criminal justice, uh, education, uh, youth violence, uh, housing, and economic development. And from that, we put together a plan, if you will, to address some of those issues through our action committees. Mm -hmm. We have a board of uh, 15 people uh, of those core areas that I just mentioned. And uh, as I said, we, we do core or we do uh, initiatives within those areas. Okay. And so the Miami-Dade Commission funds you? Miami-Dade County does. County funds you. Right. Okay. And so the commission has said that they can no longer fund you? Well, let me kind of put that in. Yeah, in, let's get in, that into in proper perspective. That, that article did not give a full description or story. Uh, we, we've done several disparity studies in the past. Mm -hmm. For instance, in, two, in 2007, and I have copies here, we did a retrospective, the status of black, uh, the black community in, in mm -hmm. Miami-Dade County. That was done by the FIU Metropolitan Center. And again, it focuses on our core areas, economic development, housing, criminal justice, and it gives you uh, stats and data about those areas. Mm -hmm. In 2009, MAP or MD was established. Right. We moved from MAP to MD. MD was established, and at that time, we did a disparity study called the Miami Day Disparity Analysis Data Report. That was done by Social Compact mm -hmm. uh, out of DC, uh, 2011. And what were the findings, just in general, of the disparities in the black community versus the community at large? Well, if you look at the disparities in housing, which still exist, mm -hmm. you know, it's very difficult to buy a home here in Miami Dade County. Mm -hmm. uh, we established a down payment assistance program for first time home buyers to address those issues. Okay. Uh, we provide up to um, a little over $7,000 <coughs> to address those. And, and most of our work is done uh, in what's called targeted ur urban areas that right. the county uh, designed back in, in the mid 90s. Okay. Uh, if you look at violence, and particularly youth violence, uh, we established teen court. Right. Okay. Well, well, let me let me just go back. So now the the funding this disparity study is done, but, but for what purpose? Let me finish so I can I can. Well, you know, <laughs> some, some. we have limited time. I know you do. I know you do. But this disparity I, study is very large. But 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 also <laughs> what I want to add is that uh, we do a report card every two years. Okay. That report card gives you 
demographics mm-hmm. exactly what I just said. Mm-hmm. So in terms of cost and a shorter volume of time, Sparity study was every 10, 10 years. Right, like the census. We, exactly, and that data is used to do that. Mm-hmm. We do a report card every two years to talk about the, the disparities right. and the issues right. that I just mentioned. Okay. So. Go ahead, and question. so, all right. So, and so now, the commission has voted that there's no need, or there's no, there's just no money to do this study. Uh, I won't say that there's no need because there's always a need. I mean, mm-hmm. they're, they're, they're so then, why issues. can't they find the money? Gotta ask them. Well, John, that's okay. the question. And the one thing we talk about is MD, and there's a board of fifteen individuals. Correct. Where did they come into this conversation in terms of the board oversees MD, not the commission, correct? Right. We, we went to Commissioner Edmondson's office, mm-hmm. and we said that we are charged with doing a study. Mm-hmm. However, if you look at the time frame of that study, which is every 10 years, we give you the same snapshot every two years. So to be honest and upfront, we were the ones who, who requested that. Requested the study not to be paid again paid for no 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 we requested that the report card be the information regarding as opposed to the study correct because right because one if if you look at real time it is a lot sooner than 10 years and and if you talk to researchers they will say that five years probably is a better time frame in terms of of the data okay but let me understand you you were doing both we did, yeah, we did. Right, a, we and did. now you think it, it's more efficient, efficient to just do every two years? Correct. Okay, that sounds a little bit like what's happening with the census and that question. Okay, yeah, can, can I say something real quick? So this, where are you, Ruben? Right, right here. Okay. So this is, you know, I appreciate you being here, John, because mm-hmm. we definitely needed to hear from your What response. are you talking into? I can barely hear you. You can't can you hear there me there? You go. You go. <laughs> All right. So I appreciate you being here, John, because we needed to get your perspective. But my concern is you're right. Things haven't changed. MD, which was officially mapped, started back in the early well was they went into the commission went into it looking into it in the eighties after the McDuffie riot. When McDuffie riot happened as a result of all of the same things that we're experiencing now. Uh, you know, poor and adequate housing, uh, lack of employment opportunities, lack of inclusion in management positions, that right. sort of thing. All of those things happened. And that was back in the early 80s. Right. And so it existed prior to that as well. So my question is this. You, you, the MD, the, the advisory trust, is supposed to be an, the entity that informs the county as to what the issues are and gives them guidance as to how they can correct those issues. And to me, I'm wondering why are we still stuck? Right. That's, that's the question well, I want to know. Right. Why and we, why because, right. And to my mind, it would seem like you might need them, you know, the 10 year and more frequently because in 10 years, it's not changed. I mean, to a level where we, there's any, even even any parity between the black community and other communities. The difference is currently in our budget, we do have the resources to do every two years. Okay. Yeah, but this is not just about the study. Right. We're talking about the, the idea. Outcomes. We're talking about the outcomes now. Right. So the study was designed, the MD was designed to inform the city of Miami and the county because they com- uh, collaborated together. And Carrie Meek had something to do with that whole thing. And now we're supposed, you guys are supposed to inform the county what needs to be done to bring black people uh, up to the up to up to up to level of where they can up be to more sea com- level yeah, up to okay. <laughs> so they can be more competitive. So now in 20 some odd years, 30 some odd years, we're still addressing the same issues. Right. So what to me, how do we address the outcomes? How do we get it to where? There can be some growth, substantial growth, not minimal incremental well, to, growth. To your point, Ruben, but, but what are the outcomes? You right. know, that here we, we are. We're saying we're having these studies for all these years, and we're still in the same place right. as you said, John. So, what is being put in place to begin to begin to move that needle upwards, where the black community is um, finding parity? 
Well, most recently, in in one case, the county just developed a subcommittee that deals. <laughs> no, no. You, Wait, you, I'm sorry. DC, don't. Yeah. No, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> uh, uh, go ahead, finish up. No, man. but a subcommittee of policymakers to deal with disparities in Miami-Dade County. That's never been done before. Okay, I you know I, I think the That's biggest my, between the phone calls I'm callers I see you I'm coming to you between them and my phone blowing up you know it is the biggest problem uh, that we have and I think that we can all agree on is we there are a lot of studies it's a lot of panels it's a lot of state of the unions it's a lot of all of that and none of that is working and so the last thing in the world is we want is less eyes on it right. So I think when we come back from the break, we need to discuss what what was the year that it was started? 1992. 1992. When it was started. Can we point to one major success that they have had through these studies since 1992? Can we? And there's some other things we need to talk about as well. Well, we're going to start there. Okay. So. (laughs) Stay close. I am Jill Tracy. This is Hot Talk on Hot 105. Time to join the morning show. Today's a revealing old school 105.1. Oh, uh, Tom, I hear you're having Bootsy Collins on the One More Time okay, show. Okay, so was that Bootsy talking or was that. <laughs> that was Bootsy? Anita Baker. Oh, that was <laughs> Anita Baker. Oh. Oh, well, as Anita said, Baker doing Bootsy. you having Bootsy. <laughs> I know, but I thought somebody was talking in third person. I don't know. I just, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. It's the Tom Joyner Morning Show. Thanks for the 25 years of the Tom Joyner Morning Show. We're back Monday from 6 to 9 a.m. Hot 105. Today's R&B and old school. And welcome back to Hot Talk. 888 uh I, you, you know how you say something all the time you're like was that right uh, <laughs> um, you can listen callers I'm going to make some time at the l- end of this break to take all of your calls so like let's say at the 40 because the phone is blowing up and you can tell it's a little busy in here right now so <laughs> just hold that hold, I, sh- okay wait I'm gonna <laughs> just because y'all did not hold that thought I'm gonna take these two <clears throat> uh, hi welcome to hot talk who's this That was from Miami. S- say your name one more time, babe. Ike. Ike. Ike, Ike yeah. you have a question or comment, Ike? Yeah, you, you pretty much stole it right before you went on break. When you asked what was one good thing that came out of everything that they was doing. Right. Okay, so then we'll go back to you, John. W- one major accomplishment. There are several things. Okay. One thing, as I mentioned earlier, was the ability to put first-time homeowners in house. Okay. But prior to that, particularly black people, were having difficulty buying houses in Miami-Dade County. So since uh, 1995, we've, we've been able to put over 10,000 families who've used our down payment assistance program. Okay. Another uh, outcome was I mentioned our teen court. Mm-hmm. We had young people who were c- committing uh, committing petty crimes, mm-hmm. largely shoplifting. Many mm-hmm. of those young people could not accept uh, scholarships to college. They couldn't get some of the jobs that we take for granted, like Burger King and McDonald's. Um, Teen Court, which is a program that young people operate the court. It's a first-time misdemeanor court. They're able to address those issues, right. get those young people uh, on, on, on the right road. And as we talk about youth violence in Miami-Dade County, this is a deterrent to violent crime. So, John, my question, how many how many homes? 10,000. 10,000. What is the percentage? 10,000 families. What is the percentage of black families that have received that? Because that's what we're talking about. Uh, Yeah, I can't give you that right now, but it's it's a pretty good amount. Well, we need to know what that amount is. That's why we're here. Okay. Yeah. And I think that that is why they're, um, you know, there's just a, a, a lack of. Yes. G- g- go finish go your thought. Finish your okay. thought. I'm gonna let you <laughs> okay, I'm going to go. When I saw that this morning, like I said, I responded. Right. But I responded from a, a ignorant perspective because what's happening here, we're talking about MDEAT and the disparity on housing, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. 
my focus as a, as the president of the Miami Dade Chamber for the last five years has been a disparity issue when it comes to economics. When it comes to less than two percent of of um, the dollars that are spent in Miami-Dade County going to black businesses. So I don't hold you for that one, but I do hold you for what we're talking about now. And so this this conversation has opened up a little bit more. But I know that Mr. Clark and I are here for, for a few other reasons. <clears throat> and again, talking about the disparity, there's right. more than just that disparity. Well, when we talk about know. economics, when you're not making money, you can't afford to buy a house. Right. You can't send... Uh, send your children to school. So there are many issues that we're dealing with. D.C.? The bottom line is we make up 19 to 20 percent of the population here in Miami-Dade County uh, and getting peanuts from both the county and the school board, city of Miami, and they are the largest employers in Miami-Dade in County. county. Yeah. So if you're giving 2 percent of your of your work to blacks in this community that amounts to death right. and destruction in the hood right all right and so that disparity again is just not miami-dade county which is the worst mm -hmm. they're actually worse than than the school board mm -hmm. but the but the school board, board is uh the beacon council all of yeah. them Jesus. are yeah. neglecting the black community yeah. they've actually turned their backs on the black community and left us just like those refugees out in those living in those cases. Yeah. That's how they treating black folks. Well, here you in know what? And I was going to say that, um, you know, you can really use what's happening from up, you know, from the White House um, as sort of a blueprint to what happens to people. I've been telling people for a long time the fire this time. It's not going to be us. It's going to be brown people. It's going to be all of these, all of the immigrants and, you know, those that are in cages. Now, anybody who can look at that and see these people in cages, these men like, you know, 500 deep in a the cage, they can't even sit. They can't. Anybody who can look at that and be OK with it. Is the reason why we have this problem now. But Jill, the difference is that that's been blasted for everyone to see across the country. Well, uh, whereas this situation that has been going on for years and years day. never get the light of right. day. Right, and that's why we up in here tonight. Exactly. Because, and again, Jill, yes. Again, I was taken aback again because when our chairwoman and I respect Audrey Edmondson, when she was sworn in as the new chairwoman of Miami Dade of Miami Dade County. One of the comments, one of the last commentaries that she made was that she was going to deal with the disparity issue here in Miami. But again, that was dealing with the economic issue. As I said, when it came to procurement, those procurement issues right. and the monies and the but dollars that, that are being has not changed. But either. that still has not changed. This and we need to deal with that issue right. as well. <clears throat> and also we need to deal with this issue because, as as John has said, Nothing has changed. Right. Well, you know, in my um, I've been here. I'm I should I'm almost a native. Right. Um, but in four years that I've been doing hot talk, I've had an opportunity to talk to, you know, a lot of people that I wanted to who have um, keys to the gate. And what I found in this four years is that um, no one has a seat at the table, like for real, who is um, in those spaces. They. It, it it's it's it will happen that th something like this will happen. Ah, uh, what's a good one? Liberty Rising is a good one. Um, that it it sound it look real pretty, but it sound like a lie. And then a month ago, we got those flyer. Everybody started, you know, uh, t texting the flyer that the affordable housing rates in uh, Liberty City and Liberty Square will start at $800 for people who were previously paying maybe two or $300. And we gave them ample opportunity, ample, several times, to give those people at least the grace to know that you probably should be looking. I can tell you many times, many, that I ask, would you advise people just on the love that they should really start looking because the opportunities are going to change drastically. And if their incomes have not, they will be out. And here we are. And this is the, this is the problem. It's like being in medicine. First, do no harm. And then this pops up. And, you know, people are surprised that black people are like, oh, my God, what? Yeah. 
So the problem is systemic and it's deep. And we will keep having this conversation every two or three or four years until somebody owns up to it. Well, to the point, and, I, and I, I'm sure you guys are not really happy to hear this, but to the point to Eric saying nothing will change, uh, I did mention that there is a community disparities committee. So let's hope with, as they start to meet and things move forward, let's hope that things will change. Yeah, but even when even when the disparity study is brought forward, you have to check that. Right. In the case of the school board, for instance, they tried to hide the the heading of maintenance. Eight hundred and sixty million dollars during the time of the study into procurement. Maintenance belong in construction, not procurement. So these are the little tricks they play. There, there was another heading saying. uh, uh Emergency work. There were no blacks on emergency work. Out of that 860 in maintenance, very few dollars went to black contractors. These are the things that we're trying to do. So when Edmondson said that they have no money to deal with disparity studies, right. the number one job, the number one concern of uh, any politician, black politician here in Miami-Dade County, is to bridge the disparity between blacks and Hispanics in this damn town. And that's not happening. So if she said that, that was atrocious. Well, D.C., I want to say this. With a $6 billion annual budget, there is money for issues that they have that, they oh, are, I can't that, that is a priority to them. So Please, one of the things that we need to understand is that we got to show up. Now, Eric, you asked a question about how many people of color did MD uh, put in housing. And one of the things that you said is true. Part of the reason why they have these programs that were designed for black people specifically. But I know that a lot of those people that are getting the housing are Hispanic. Well, part of the reason is that we have people who are underemployed or unemployed and they can't even qualify for some of these programs that we have that set aside. No, that so is not. That, that, so Ruben, now, so Ruben, now, Ruben, <laughs> Ruben, 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 Ruben. What's that? <laughs> Look here. I went through. Okay, when I came back mm -hmm. uh, and I was on Miami Beach, right. I went through one of those programs to try and get my mom into one of those, uh, you know, nice assisted livings on Miami Beach. Mm -hmm. And we went all the way through that program and we got to the end and they had another barricade up for us. Right, so I know firsthand. So, yeah, I'm not saying that they're not obstacles Look, or barriers, but, but I'm, I'm saying to you that one of the things I know for sure, because I sat there and, and looked at the numbers, and I'm saying to you that a lot of those families did not qualify. So you have people that qualify, but then there are blocks and barriers. You are correct. I'm not, I'm not disputing you on that, but I'm telling you, you're probably one of the few that qualified that could go all the way as far as you went. If you look at the numbers of people who starred, and can't even get through to the okay, but then level. that but okay, but even so my, if that's true, but but so Ruben, my point is, this if is where that's true, yeah, if that's true, then somewhere down the, it's too many black folks getting good government checks to make sure that people know that people show up, that people are prepared. What is happening in this right. food that's chain that enough people, even when you do all that, enough people still don't qualify? That the only thing you could put in there is, oh, well, you know, black people just don't X, Y, and Z. No, it is not just up to, you know what you're dealing with because you've been studying it forever. So now why haven't you figured out a way to move through those, you know, if you went down we the left, the right, the first time, go to right the next time. Right, Do you know what I'm saying? We, the situation is desperate, but we act like it's, you know, well. It's going to change. <laughs> how many? By who? When? And how long is it going to take? Well, it's not going to change, long? Jill, when those who are sitting in the seats really don't this what I'm saying. want to make the change. And why is that? This is, and, and that's what I'm going to add. Those of you who are sitting in those seats, what is it? You see what's happening. You know you are well educated you've been around the world three four five times you see it and you see it coming and you do nothing about it and your that you, your community has put faith in you and said listen we need you to go fight for us and you say yes i'm gonna fight for you i'm a you know why you serving fried chicken and hot dogs yes i'm gonna go and i'm gonna fight for you and every year we end up right back here who is going to be accountable for nothing ever getting 
done on a level compare if you compare those studies john i guarantee you with the hispanic community of the same time you will not see them same numbers mm. daniela many of the people who are the gatekeepers or in those seats are compromised mm. so they're not going to be able to advocate for the uh, black community or serve us to move us out of this disparity that we're in um, based on the web report from md concerning their home ownership program the hap program back in 2016 out of the 420 families 327 um were hispanic that uh. got the home ownership <laughs> assistance and based on wow. the report 71 were african americans mm. so there are lots of disparity right there mm. um and through that many of those homes were purchased in district 8 district 9 mm. district 12 13 and district 1 fuzzy math okay. man right. we've been having the same report the concern is not about the report because if you read the legislation it's only saying it's deleting the requirement it's not precluding md to continue to study there's right. money in the budget to provide a study it's just not requiring them to do the study they've had several town halls through the state of black miami okay so wait a minute, let me ask you something i'm sorry let me cut okay. you off but okay so it's not requiring them to do that study so that what is it three hundred fifty thousand dollars they said it's going to cost to do it correct where does that money go it still is there someplace correct but it gets uh, reappropriated for something else for something else but, but jill uh, at the end of the day it's there what? correct it's, it's but, right there's, and through but all what so what do we do to fix it that and that John, is that's where we go back. Through John, all those partners, fix it. through all those partners that have joined with MD from Nana and from all these other partners, right. they should be held accountable too to provide a study to MD. You shouldn't just be doing this on your own because you're serving the entire community. Right. And again, the article says one thing, but if you read the legislation, it's only deleting the requirement. Therefore, MD still has a responsibility to this black community. And and but the problem is, John just quoted four or five hundred families. Right. You understand me? And and if we went by that, we'll say, okay, well, some somebody black, right, somebody, you know, somebody, somebody, somebody oh, getting well, something cool. right. right. But oh, out of the four hundred and fifty right. families, only seventy one. Get the hell out of here with that. And you know that's what we have that's to. We, we have to hold about. everybody accountable, including John, including every commissioner, yeah. including everybody who say they're going to be doing something. We got to start holding them accountable. And that's we. <laughs> what did Debbie Allen say. And that's where you start paying right. <laughs> Here. First of all, in the answers, and I, I hear what you're saying, DC. I said over uh, since 1995, it's been 10,000 families. Yeah, but how many of those 10,000 were black that looked like us? So if, 200, if, if 150, you take 450, and you got 71. You take 10,000. What you got? 700. Right. Come on, man. Keep in mind, you can't. You can't. These are state dollars. You don't can't. defend it, John. No, I'm just not. don't I'm defend not. it. I'm not. Just but, but okay. I'm just but John, 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 just don't defend it. What we are at the, the problem is the core. How do we change those numbers? That's ridiculous amount of numbers. If this money is set aside for this purpose for these people, then why is it that we out of that ten thousand? What did you say for seventy one? How do we change that? That's you, all I need. I don't need to know the rest of how it happens. How you do continue, we change that? You continue to go out. And you continue to go in, in special areas, as we do, and inform people of the opportunity to buy a home. But, well, John, John, there, there's another thing. So what Jill was saying earlier, the thing that needs to be focused on are the blocks and barriers. So Jill just mentioned in her scenario that they were able to get to the last stage, and then they couldn't complete the process. So when we, if you want to study something, you want to look at what are the blocks and barriers for these black families and why can't they get to closing on those homes? And that's where we need to be putting right. our effort into to find out how we can eliminate those blocks and barriers for them to get home. And what happened to because us the was MD our... dollars were supposed to be for black people. Right. It was supposed to be specifically. What happened people. to us, this was Miami Beach, but um, was that the original instructor did not give us, if it was 25 pages, we only got 17 so that when we got ready to go to close, we didn't have the rest of those pages. Like, wait a minute, we didn't, we didn't know we were supposed to have that information. No, but so that's just, just as you know, call it what you want to, call it what you want to, but, or deliberate. 
But this race is Okay, because then I would have, it was like, oh, but you're going to apply again next year. Do you know what I'm saying? And that that's just another way to get rid of people. It's like, how many times are you going to do that? It's like, forget it. I just saved some more money this year and just keep it moving. This is ridiculous. You know, you know how we are. We got too much stuff. Look, black women got too much stuff on their minds. Anyway, I can't be going through that over and over again. You see what I'm saying? But that's what happens. Those like, you know, it's just like a cat and mouse game. Just keep, just like what's happening up top at 45. Every time you think, ha ha, I got you. Oh no, I'm going to start another fire over here. So you'll go run chase that and you forget about those other what? 800,000 people, I mean, 8,000 people that didn't get loans. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, it's not only. DC? It's systemic. It's not just the county. No, it is systemic. It's, it's a school board. Uh, the Beacon Council is supposed to uh, bring toward this community seven targeted areas that will enhance the area. Mm -hmm. All right? Among those areas, uh, those targeted areas are aviation, banking and finance, Creative design, hospitality, life science, and healthcare technology, and trade and logistics. Just about every other community are getting those dollars yeah. and those new jobs that are coming via the Beacon Council, but us. Mm -hmm. And so, as a commissioner, as a servant of the community, shouldn't you be just hollering to the top of your lungs where is our damn dollars right you know where where are our aviation centers where are our logistics centers you understand what are our trading logistics centers and you just don't hear enough of that coming from our elected officials yeah. so what i'm telling this community is from this point on hold whoever you elect as your servant to be just that a servant no more electing individuals and they become celebrities and they forget about you and your needs. Hold them accountable 24-7, 365. And I think, you know, one of the one of the services that we have to provide, right, um, is a better way to deliver the message. Right. I'm the first one to tell you, I really didn't. I spent most of my life doing gossip. Right. I was not paying attention. Right. I really wasn't. And so it wasn't until, you know, s something happened. My mother got sick. I didn't have the resources. Her stuff wasn't in order. I'm like, oh, my God, what? And that's what woke me up because it hit my home. Right. And so now after that, it was like, oh, my God, no wonder. And so a lot of us are in that sp Those of us who are in that space have to do that work, period. A lot of, just like I said, I've quoted it a hundred times. The women's health or black women's health organization in D.C. did a study and found that the average black woman walks around with the stress level of a white woman in a mental institution. That is average every day. And now I'm going to ask her to be loaded down with five, six, seven other things. And she's normally head of household because in order to get welfare, she couldn't have a man. And mm. I could go on and on and on how systemic it is that we not we don't even have the strength yet to fight to achieve. So that's why, John, you you're there and I'm putting my faith in you to go in there and fight for me. And then this happens. And then you're the only person we had to point to. But your hands are tied because of. Audrey, didn't, they said, well, you know, you don't have to do it. You can use that $350,000 for something else. I'm just saying. Gordon, Eric knows. Well, here we are. What are we going to do? Exactly. This is what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, that's, that was saying. You know, I would like to ask the we commissioner. We got callers, too. I'll take those. I would like to ask the commissioner to sit down with the chamber and the NAACP and whomever else with John and MD and truly explain to us why that money doesn't need to be spent. Been doing I, that all I don't even really care about why. How no, do we make but, it happen? But you're right. Because you know but what? We're we about still to need have, to have are that we conversation. Are we having the state of black Miami this year? <laughs> okay. I mean, are what we, happens when we do have it? Nothing. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's, why, that's why I so, hesitate. But that's right. what I'm saying. This, so could we just this year change and, and not try to solve what? all the problems of the world again, in our sessions, mm -hmm. you know, and find one thing and dig into it like... Well, we this is that somewhere. one thing, and I go That's back. I go back to the disparity issue when it comes to economics. And again, I ask the commissioner to let's sit down and let's move forward on that issue, as she promised when she was sworn in to add to 
address the disparity here in Miami-Dade County. Right. And to me, it's not just the economic issue, but it's the issue that we're talking about here today. So I don't see how all of a sudden we'd make a decision to not <laughs> but it is this. all of it's economic. They don't want to expose what their findings have been. I mean, right. MD has been pro- providing a study for years. Right. I mean, but what has been actually implemented from that? I exactly. mean, from that they have expanded their partners and we definitely thank you for those partnerships. But beyond partnerships and them getting funded for um services, what really has happened to move the needle in housing and home ownership for our regular just everyday people? I mean, I don't I don't see enough going on. I'm in need of housing myself and several of my colleagues. We can't even qualify for MD. Can't find you. You don't call us back. We we can't really find. We, we don't even know how to approach MD. And I mean, it's not just for the people here in this room. When that article went on Facebook, I mean, it kind of went viral. Everybody's yeah. asking, like, why would they no longer be required to produce a report? But that's not the question. Where are the solutions? Right, right. right. That's coming Again, out of MD. Where so are the solutions? What are we do? So one one of the things before you speak, John, one of the things I think that you can do when we talk about solutions is that we need to improve the number of African Americans that are getting housing and getting the funding through MD. So I think that you gotta set a bar for yourself. If you if you got seventy one last year, then we need to get two hundred and ten this next next year. We need to set a bar so there's incremental Im- improvement. If you worked in corporate America and you were given a task yeah. to fund <laughs> black uh, families and do things in the black community, and the numbers came out like what we just saw there, you'd be everybody be fired. So we gotta we gotta make sure that we do whatever it takes and come to the community, whatever we can do to help. Come to Jill, come to NAACP, come to Eric, whatever we can do to help with your outreach, your engagement, whatever we can do to help get those numbers up, that's what we want to do. We need to make sure we get those numbers up. Yeah. I hope you called, you didn't call my office and nobody answered. That's, that's, they just going to call us back. <laughs> that's pretty disturbing. They don't I don't, call us back. I don't think that, that, that happened. Mm. No, uh, Housing-wise, I mean, again, as I said earlier, the surtax dollars that we get from the state, those are, those are tax uh, state dollars. So with that, you cannot cherry pick who buys a house or not. You can't. You that can't say you yeah. and not you. Yeah, but I guarantee you. I guarantee you in the Cuban community, there are groups like yours, right, that are spent trying to help Cuban families. Right. No, no other families. But Cuban families find housing. Right. right now, Cubans probably control 80 to 90 percent of the housing in Miami-Dade County, and you know it. Yep. You understand me? So here you are, you know, st- strapped with trying to find housing for everybody. <laughs> and they're strapped with trying to find housing for their kind only. You know, we got to start thinking. Right for ourselves and close rank for ourselves. I know the, the county government don't allow that per se, but there are things you can do. I mean, I won't out you out, brother, but there are things you can do. Just like Ruben say, if you can't say it publicly, then give it to some of us who can. Right. Amen. Uh, I'm going to take a call. Uh, Omar. Uh, yeah. Pres- Hi, welcome to Hot Talk. Omar. Good. Yes, I'm here. Yes, sir. You had a comment? Yeah. Not, not a comment so much as, yeah, comment. Um, you know, there was a study done called Umbrellas Don't Make It Rain, and it was also an article called The Wealth Divide in Miami. And basically what it says is that um, if you live in Miami and you're white, you're worth $107,000. If you're black, you're worth 3700 If you're from Jamaica or Haiti, you're worth $12,000. And if you're worth from Cuba, it's, you're worth $22,000. So that kind of touches on what the brother was just talking about. But I think we must read these studies that says umbrellas don't make it rain and the other study that says the wealth divide in uh, Miami. And basically what they're saying is, is that unless there's government intervention, black people will always be at the bottom of the scale. And especially African Americans, descendants of slavery, they will, um, they will be suffering in this country. So until we stand up and start um, doing stuff for ourselves, yet still we still we vote Audrey and all of them back in. 
these people don't serve our best interests, but yet we vote them back in. So, therefore, if we are responsible. Everybody that's listening to your show, everybody that's sitting down and constantly putting these people back in the office who are not standing up for your position. I'll give you an example. The Congressional Black Caucus, if you go to their website, they say, oh, we're here to help keep government together, whatever, whatever. You go to the Congressional Latino Caucus site, they say that they work for the issues of Latino people, for Latino issues. Now, if we're voting the Congressional Black Caucus in time and time again, but yet they can't even mention black in their mission statement to helping black people, what does that say to us as a people if we continue to vote these people in who do not, vote our, who do not have our best interests at heart? And so we're only getting what we deserve. As long as we keep putting these people in and not holding them accountable, we're not going to move nowhere forward. So until we get some kind of there sort of there's consequences against going against your neighborhood as consequences against going against your people hey we're doing for the structure and yeah. that's it okay then take peace thank you babe I think that's a very good point. Like, if there were some consequences to holding a job uh, and you were supposed to, you know, your metric, just like he, that, who, who said that about corporate? If you don't hit them numbers by the end of the year, you're a toast. Toast, toast, toast. How is it in these public sector arenas that, that those kind of um, boundaries are not in place? Whites for whites, Cubans for Cubans. Jews for Jews, blacks for everybody. Well, that's, yeah, that's one way to put it. So, John, um, we are coming to, there's, there is so much more um, to this conversation, and I want, it is one that is going to continue. Daniela, um, you and I have talked about, uh, well, that is your whole platform, is affordable housing. And it is, uh, and the first time we talked about it, um, I never thought I would ever live in Broward. I mean, you know, shout out to Broward. It's no Tino shade on Broward, however. But I could not afford to live in Miami uh, any longer in the custom, in the you know manner I had become accustomed to with my salary. Period. End of story. And I might be in Winter Haven soon. <laughs> at this point, <laughs> I have to commute at this point. Um, and, and increasingly, many of us are being priced out. And to your point about Liberty Square, I just attended the uh, the ribbon cutting ceremony a few weeks ago for mm-hmm. Phase One. And from Phase One, there'll be two hundred and four units. And while that flyer has been passing around, let's be clear: seventy three units are going to be public housing. So seventy three families will be coming back mm-hmm. to the new Liberty Square that will right. be paying the same amount of public housing they rent they were paying before, but at the other one hundred and thirty one apartments mm. will be at market. Right. And that's going to be a mixed income type of community, which will range from, for, for every phase, for actually. Every phase, yes, so it's it's mixed income. How many communities do can we point to mm-hmm. that have had that sort of mixed use that maintain it? Well, one part of the NAACP. Once the commitment been, has been met. We've been very instrumental in making certain that the residents that are there now have been very informed of their rights. And I believe because we've been there along with the entire coalition, some things have been made to, um, you know, be in the best interest of the residents. So they're mm-hmm. very well informed. They have their right of return of agreement, which uh, related and the county has been standing by. And we've kind of been that watchdog to make certain that they're going to uphold those rights of all the residents. They've identified many of the tenants to come back while they're doing that. They are soliciting well, uh, new tenants to come in for the mixed. Um, mixed income. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, and that is how isn't that how developers get the big tax breaks because they have enough affordable housing to make the. Um, whatever the you know the the quota well, is, I don't know if they have enough, have but they have definitely. Well, they're supposed <laughs> to have enough. Well, they have units available for at all markets. Well, remember, they're going from seven hundred units to what fifteen hundred, seventeen hundred units, right? And yeah, some of those are actually home ownership, correct? As well as the 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 folks public that housing. have right. public housing right. as well. And everybody's focusing on Liberty Square. But you got Andy Coleman scattered sites that you got to look at that the same process is happening. In. Well, the same. And so and so you're correct. Your question is. Yes. OK. How many of them you start <clears> off <throat> this way, but then does it mean do you maintain it? And if you don't maintain it, what do we need to put in place to maintain 
that these units will remain. And I don't think that that's in their agreement. It doesn't say that they'll remain forever. Right. They have a, right. They and have how a, long they are their leases? Years. They get 20, 20 years, years to remain affordable. Then they right. have to reapply for that same agreement so, going so, forward. So you, but that's so if you board, rent right now, all apartments have that same like twenty year type of agreement. They're not in perpetuity to be forever. Right. They have to go ahead and reapply for it. Most of the time, they're granted in again, but um, on the outset, it's twenty years. Through the Florida housing condition and, and other areas. Well, uh, hold on, thought I got to take a break. Uh, we'll be back on the other side. Dark, uh, Dark Carter will bring us uh, back from the break, and uh, we will continue our conversation until our special guest. Uh, gets here, Miss Claire Solmers uh, from Fashion Bomb Daily. Just got off a flight at MIA and she's on her way in. Uh, so we are, we will, uh, and Dara will be back on the other side. I am Jill Tracy. This is Hot Talk on Hot 105. Live from the 1 800 411 Payne Studios. After 911, call 411. 1 800 411 Payne. Hi, this is Charlie Wilson. You're listening to WHQT, Coral Gables. Miami's Hot 105. <laughs> Cox Media Group Station. The sky over you, same sky over me, over land, over city, over sea. That's something we can achieve But first you must take your chance to speak Cause we, we are the people This is our chance From the halls, from the hills, from the city Hills from the 
To join Hot Talk, call 888-550-9105. And now, back to Hot Talk. <laughs> Dark, Carter! How are you? I'm good. Oh, babe, that was, you know, that part. <laughs> <laughs> that part. That was, and we didn't even plan that. But, you know, good energy finds good energy. Absolutely. So listen, so where can people find you? So you, anyone can find me at my website, DaraCarter.com. Mm -hmm. You can find my tour dates, also my first and second album, The Gemini and Hello Freedom. You can also find me at Dara Carter Music. Um, if you are a nonprofit or an organization or a movement, reach out to me. I create songs for movements. So uh -huh. um, that's another thing that I do. Yeah, you can find me at Dara Carter Music or DaraCarter.com. That's D-A-R-A, -A, Carter.com. Awesome. Awesome, but you're gonna stick around. She's not leaving, uh, but y'all leaving. <laughs> uh, <because laughs> uh, hot talk at midnight. Uh, we are segueing over to uh, Miss Claire Selmers. I'm gonna get her name right. Uh, beautiful story uh, about the sister Fashion Bomb. Go on her Instagram right now at Fashion Bomb Daily and uh, prepare yourself for some fabulousness coming up. But wrapping up this part one of this panel. Because, Daniela, we have talked about this before, um, you know, about, you know, <laughs> power concedes nothing without demand. Exactly. And these, like, one-offs getting upset because the new times, <laughs> not the Miami times, but the new times <laughs> did a story um, that is somewhat, uh, I don't know the questionable is the word. I think that... It could. Mm, mm. There's so many reasons why. Missing parts to the story. <laughs> um, <clears throat> there's so many reasons why other uh, publications uh, can dig in in different ways than others can. I, that's all I can say about that. You, you, okay, you hear me. You're speaking through the words. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I would like to. Um, I would like to bring this panel back once we've had a time. We've had time to read this. Have all of you all read the status of the black community? You can't have it. I can't have it. I'll get one to you. Why can't I have it? Because you need to. to give it to you. Y'all heard that. No, no, no. no. Y'all heard. I'm going to give it back to you. I, I promise I'll you. I'll give it back to you. I can't do no more. It's going to be redacted, though. Thank you. <laughs> 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 Let me send it and get it redacted, and then I'm going to give it back to you. So, so Gio, we got, we, got a, Gio we, got, we got one right here now. John is supposed to be helping Daniela. Absolutely. With a, so that's going, to be, that's going to be a report we get back to you with on that. We'll see. Okay. And stay, tuned, okay. stay, stay tuned, America. Okay. Stay tuned, America. Well, you know what? Five and see, this is <laughs> that would be five out of five. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yes, That's goodness. Right. I'm gonna okay. bring all Miami Day college. Well, listen. Get ready. Okay. So listen. Come, uh, next week, every, the third uh, Sunday of every month is my Paycheck to Real Wealth panel, which came out of a conversation over dinner about exactly what I told you. Mm -hmm. Right. That after just life. Right. I look like a criminal on paper. Right. So these my hot talk money honeys have helped me, you know, get at least to a, a credit score. I can say out loud. And <laughs> I am on the road. Uh, with, so you and I, we need to have lunch together because I'm on that road, too. And I would like to live in Dade County again. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah. So maybe we can make that 76. That's right. Right. John. I'm sorry. Who said this? Sure, was talking to 
And <laughs> and John, where can we get a copy of the Black World Guide that was recently available at right. the Overtime Music Arts Festival this weekend? I'm looking for my copy. I have one. Awesome. Okay. Yes. And can you tell us um, what's in that? Is that still a directory? Yeah, it's okay. a directory that we did with businesses in Miami-Dade County, particularly in the TUAs, to give people an idea of what's there. The idea came a long time ago. When people come to town, we, we used to do this and issue this out during Jazz in the Gardens. Folks are here from out of town. They want to know about different restaurants, hair salons, barbershops, and so on. Uh, but we continue to do that. And so you, I'm glad that Cheryl has one for you. And is that shared with the Greater Miami Chamber of Commerce? Because they're putting out one, too. Are you featured in that as well? The, the Greater Miami Chamber, Greater Miami Commission Business Bureau. Yeah. It just goes on and on. Yeah, because they're looking. And all of that money, y'all, all that duplication y'all doing, all that money could be going to. Okay. I can't. That's another conversation. It just is. All right. So listen. Uh, can we commit to that? I mean, because I'm serious. You know, I don't want to have all these. And I told uh, Eric and I had lunch and we talked about this already. I don't want to have all these one off conversations where, you know, we, we put it on the table and OK, well, well, we'll get back to it. No, no, that's not working. That's just not working. So we have a very serious political season coming up. And um, this the job of this show. This is a community affairs show. The point is to bring the community all of this information that they say they don't have or you can't reach it. Okay, so we are the world right here. It'll all happen right here. So can I get a commitment from you, John Dixon, and Reuben Rob, who is at the dough? Yeah. Reuben, <laughs> I'm one foot out the dough. Daniela? I'm here. Cheryl Mizell will be here to shoot it all. Hey, back in the building, babe. Uh, D.C. Clark? You know. I mean, you got a lot on your plate. We got a lot to talk about. <laughs> And Gordon Eric knows you might as well just get a seat in the barbershop with Chris Norwood and Dwight Bullard because... Hey, let's we are ready because we are we are coming live now. Absolutely. This season, uh, the barbershop with um, Chris Norwood and Dwight Bullard and Gordon Eric knows we're just pulling in now. We are, will be live in the community and our first one will be at the Ward House. So um, I thank you all for coming. Um, and John, I thank you for, you know, uh, taking these whips. <laughs> and, um, and we you know i really hope that we can make some traction uh philip i didn't get to you darling i know you had a good one uh, but i'll get to you first on the next show i promise and um thank you all thank you guys so much for coming thank coming you, up we're gonna take a little break and uh coming up it is i'm gonna just call her megatron because she is bad like that <laughs> this is hot talk Your views matter to us. Call Hot Talk at 888-550-9105. Listen. Welcome back. 888-550-9105. We had to do a little uh, set change right there. Let me go to my callers while I'm waiting for this room to get set. Hey, Claire. Blessed and highly favored. How are you, doll? Okay, y'all just missed your window of opportunity for me to get to those calls. So come on in. How are you? Well traveled, Diva. Well traveled and happy to be here. <laughs> well, thank you for coming. So you, did, you, they did good time getting you from Miami International Airport, I know. Uh, all the way over here. Just zipped right over. So welcome to Hot Talk. Welcome to Miami. Thank you. You're here. You're here somewhat often. You know, I come occasionally. I come for a Revolt Music Festival sometimes. I heard that it's done. Is it done? I think last year. Yeah, I heard it's oh. not looking. You know, it, it well. seems to be a lot of things. I don't know oh. if you heard the show coming in, but we, you know. Okay. We're dealing with the uh, melody. Ah, the drama of the city. <laughs> drama being black in the city. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, uh, yeah, it's a lot. I uh, can only imagine. <laughs> you know, we're in uh, election season and there's a lot happening, but we're glad to have you bright and shining in the studio. Yes, ma'am. Ladies ma and gentlemen, those of you who, um, as I mentioned earlier, I want you to go on Instagram and go to at Fashion Bomb Daily right now and at Claire how do I pronounce it? Selmer. Selmer. Okay, that's very, my, 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 okay, we won't talk about what it is, because y'all don't know that. Um, so, Selmer, it's very much like my family name. Okay. You heard me try it. I was like, Sol, 
Because it looks what? like Sumner's when you People look at it. People add in ends yeah. or take out, you know, consonants. <laughs> and I'm just like, it's... When you look at it, it does. Okay, but you know what? It's a made-up name. My grandfather's name was Silme. He's, oh, he's that's Haitian. Funny. And when he moved here, he wanted to have an, a more American-sounding name. So he changed his name to Somers. Oh, look at that. And so that's why it's a, a little bit funky. Oh, okay. So you're of Haitian and Jamaican descent. No, my mean? mother's from the Bahamas. Haitian and Bahamian. Yes, Bahatian. Awesome. Bahatian, yes. just like Bayesian over here. You're, this is you're Ingrid Bayesian. Barbados and Haiti. Okay. Oh, you know what? You got to get the Caribbean <laughs> now. You got to get the right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Let's not have no problem. No, we, so, we, we. <laughs> Hot talk after midnight. I will reset uh, in the studio now with me. Lots of just black girl magic and fairy dust. Uh, Elena the Poet is in the building. Welcome, my dear. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you are. Thank you for, for coming out at midnight. And Miss Ingrid B. Hey, girl, on hey. the B side. The only side to be on. Uh, Ingrid has literally held down the poetry uh, kind of new uh, music vibe in South Florida for the past, what do you say, 10 years maybe, babe? Uh, 18. Wow, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just right. correct you okay. on that one. You were one of my first sponsors. Stop playing. Uh, yeah, yes, indeed. <laughs> uh, and Claire is in town for uh, yeah. a lovely event yes. happening on Wednesday. Yes. At the Betsy Hotel. The Betsy. I'm so excited about this event. One of our favorites, because both uh, Ingrid and I uh, do. As a matter of fact, the last event we did together, it was my birthday. And then we segued down to the B-Bar, which is where your event will be. Yes, it uh, will be. For, what, what was that? Was that? Slow Fridays. Slow that Fridays, yeah. Anomaly, I think, was featured. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. Okay, so now, Claire... Yes. Um, let's start at the beginning. Ooh, oh, my goodness. So 2006, <laughs> you are like in the beginning of the curve of starting um, a blog. Right? Yes. Were you always a fashion girl? I was always a fashion girl and I was always a writer. Mm-hmm. So, so from the age of nine, I have journals dating back to when I was nine years old, writing in there every other day. And it's fun to look back because I was also that person who was always making shopping lists. Also, I would see clothes on TV or in magazines and I would be like, I need to get this look. How can I get this look? So I was like a mall rat. When wow, I, was I love younger. that. And, and now, it's, now it's a blog. And I love yeah. the fact that because nothing just happens out of a vacuum mm-hmm. that becomes this successful right right so the seed was planted very early it was for you yeah. and was it your mom who was your inspiration towards fashion like who did you think at that time so fashion is in my dna my grandfather hazley newton they called him boogs he, he had a tailor shop called boogs master tailor in nassau bahamas so he used to make suits and tuxes for men for special occasions weddings funerals etc and he taught my mom how to sew so my mom she she went to the high school of fashion industries in new york city she used to make clothes for me when i was 12 years old because i was very curvy as a young girl and she didn't want me wearing anything inappropriate <laughs> to there school you go. function so <laughs> she would make clothes for me and it's always been been around me since i was very young yeah i have to say that we're gonna we have to take a break because we're out at 20 i have to say one of your um super heroic feats that i recently uh <laughs> watched on repeat several times. Oh, what's this? Was your uh, trip to the Essence Fest. And oh. like every day you were leaving the hotel in like these five, six inch sexy strappy Child. shoes <laughs> walking the streets of New Orleans. She's like, Not why can't come when you can walk? I'm yeah. like, you know what? That queen has got the legs of Jesus. Oh my gosh. Girl, that is the most. I mean, because anybody who's ever been to New Orleans, that is not just a walk around the corner. It's I mean, not. you were like, really? Is that for an... I'm from a girl who wears Converse. I used to wear heels uh-huh. when, you know, I did a lot of clubs and they ruined my feet so bad. Oh. So now I'm just like the queen of Converse. But <laughs> you really are like Beyonce in them shoes. Oh, thank you. Like, was it starting at a young age or is it just, do you have ballet in your past? I do not have ballet in my past. <laughs> Actually, my feet hurt all the time. Like okay. I had bunion surgery when I was younger. Oh. I tried to wear the most comfortable shoes I could find, but I find that, you know, it's part of the job. Yeah. Part of the job is 
wearing heels. It's like your uniform. And Beyonce does have a song, Pretty Hurts. And for me, it's just like, if you get your makeup done, you get your hair done, you have the outfit, it, the shoes, even if it's painful, you just grit your teeth and you smile and through it. Because as for me, I'm a brand. I'm I'm a representative of my of my brand all the time. Yeah. So it's not always about being comfortable. It's about showing up for work and and looking the part. So. I know that's right. Well, you know, I am on uh, Team Bruno Mars because I will be uh, in Saint Laurent with Chuck's on. My natural life. There are some oh, cute her. flats, but I just I haven't found them yet. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. but that's all right. Listen, because we need to, you know, we need to have sheroes that we can look up to who can walk in those five inch heels all it. day, every day, and we, and we appreciate them. it. Thank you, and we will watch, watch you from the cheap seats, go, girl, and appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back with Claire and Ingrid and Ilana on the other side. Stick with us, I am Jill Tracy, Elena. <laughs> you know, Jesus on the main line. Help me. Oh. Right here on Hot 105. This summer, Hot 105 in Walt Disney World Resort has more to see, do, and experience than ever. And Hot 105 can send you there. With limited time, four-day, get your ears on tickets. Just listen all week to Hot 105 for your chance to win your four days of magic, including Mickey and Minnie's surprise celebration at Magic Kingdom Park. And for more chances to win, download our free Hot 105 app by texting the keyword Hot 105 app to 28367. Get your ears on with Walt Disney World. And there's always more at Hot 105. FM.com. Time to join the morning show. Today's a brand being old school. 105.1. I don't like to, oh. to join Hot Talk. Call 888 550 9105. And now back to Hot Talk. Welcome back, 888-550-9105. What a show tonight, people. Um, but we make it happen. Those of you who will listen to the first hour, um, and if you may have missed... Hours. I'm sorry, what did you say, Ingrid that B? That needed to be two hours. It really did. But I was but like, Claire, I gotta go, because we here. Right. But that needed to be a two-hour show. But uh, yeah, it, it definitely <laughs> will be. It, we, it just a, a news story broke okay. um, this uh, week, Friday. Mm -hmm. um, about the um, one of our major like um, uh, organizations that supports the black community and economic empowerment. Um, they the county commission said that they need no longer need to do a disparity study hmm. about the wealth disparities in South Florida. Hmm. And so that was literally <laughs> for everybody from the NAACP um, to our Chamber of Commerce. And so um, it's a. <clears throat> It's a, like I said, as the AKAs would say, it is a serious matter. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think what was the, the big takeaway was that the agencies that are charged with that mm -hmm. uh, have given out 10,000 loans, but uh, only 71 mm. have gone to people of color. Um, black people, I should say. Um, the uh, a, a much larger number has gone to the Latin community. And, um, you know who has a lot of organizations also in place for those things. And so with double the effort, you know, their community, yes, is moving at a much faster rate than the black community in South Florida. And, you know, affordable housing in Miami is almost nil. And, you know, <laughs> it's, it's that same, it's sort of that same dynamic that those that are sitting at the table and the keepers at the gate, um, and somebody said it today are, you know, bought and paid for and they have too much to lose to look at the community at large. But and, you know, it's just a microcosm of what's happening in the big Everywhere. picture. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. That could be talking about the same exact scenario. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so in light of, you know, all of that, we still have to be fabulous. So <laughs> well, we can't look like you know what we're going you do. through. You know? Don't mind how I look um, right now, but we can't look like what we're going through. But it's interesting. It's interesting because um you you know, you walk in a lot of different worlds. Mm -hmm. Um now you're a Harvard grad. Yes. Um did you what did you study? I studied French and African American studies. And I studied that because my brother who 
um, encouraged me to go to Harvard. He also went to Harvard. Mm -hmm. And he said, you should just major in whatever interests you. And after you graduate, people only look at the fact that you went to Harvard. And it's true. It's true. (laughs) And I ended up, you know, just doing my own thing. I created my own job. And I think that speaking to what you were talking about earlier, Mm -hmm. the, the move is for entrepreneurship. The move is for us to create our own movements. And then the ones who make it, it's incumbent upon them to give back. You yeah. know, because no one else is giving us a handout, unfortunately. Um, and I've been in this space now of fundraising and, and seeing and there the there are basically no opportunities or there it's such a huge disparity and in, in the the standard that we're held up to as entrepreneurs is so much higher than others. Yeah. Um, I'm actually kind of obsessed with the story of Elizabeth Holmes. Have you heard of heard of this woman? No. Mm. Um, she started a company called Theranos. And yes. it was basically a fictional company. company and she raised she, all that she money. She raised like $500 million. Right. <laughs> and this woman didn't even have, have a, company. a company. Yeah, And I know so many black entrepreneurs who have legitimate businesses who mm-hmm. no one will even take, have, take a glance at them. Right. You know, but... We just have to continue. We're we're born from the struggle. Well, you know, it's it's interesting um, because you fashion is certainly one of those places. Yeah. Um, right. Where you are. Um, you your unicornness mm-hmm. shows up immediately. Mm-hmm. As I mentioned, um, one of my very best friends in the world um, is Jason Canner. He owns Soul Artist Management in new york and so uh and when we were i don't know fresh out of um college uh we used to party a lot <laughs> did a lot of partying and jason whenever we would go out he would find models uh amber valletta was his first mm-hmm. major model um that you know he just found in a nightclub and that took him to new york and and so on and so on uh and one of the things he's good jewish boy Mm-hmm. And but one of the things that um, he really wanted to do, and the reason why he called his agency Soul, is because he wanted to make it representative of the beauty that he saw in the world. Right. So he has a wide, probably one of the largest ranges of male models, um, predominantly. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, a specific eye, mm-hmm. but a spectrum of color. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, so for you in the fashion world, I know initially. Um, you know, when you first started going to the bigger shows to Milan and Paris and and so on, mm-hmm. um, did you find that there were many of us uh, sitting on like when was wait a minute, I should go back. When was the what was your first show? Hmm. What was my first show? Your first major show. Uh my first major my, show. My while you're thinking, my first major <laughs> show. <laughs> was uh calvin klein okay and naomi campbell walked okay and i lost my natural mind oh and i mean you know it was just i had i we had fresh out of college or whatever and the whole real fashion world Mm -hmm. was new to me Mm -hmm. um and just the just the power and command of naomi Mm -hmm. and then tyra um because you know we're talking uh, sort of like 90 Eight ninety nine, two thousand, right? Yeah. Um, they just enveloped the entire room, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. And then I met Beth Ann. Oh, I love Beth Ann Hardison. Beth Ann has is Jason's godmother. Okay. Um, in the business, and when she was ready to, you know, uh, kind of tr- tr- transition her models, mm-hmm. um, she walked Tyson. Mm-hmm. over to Jason's agency and then that's how we all got well they were always friends but gotcha. um, and she is just a wealth of information and really honestly I believe that if it weren't for her mm-hmm. um, that we would not have seen you know the rise of Naomi's and Tyra's and the like it's true we need yeah. advocates like her who are fighting on the front lines for diversity and inclusion and we still need her today she's yeah. the, sh- the fight continues yeah and the the fight is ongoing we have to continue to assert our our beauty our our power the fact that we're tastemakers and trendsetters and i'm so grateful to Instagram. I'm so grateful to Twitter, to the digital rev- revolution, because now we have a voice. We can't continue. I mean, Dapper Dan, I'm reading his memoir right now, and he was saying for so long people would steal his ideas. He wouldn't get credit. 
Yeah. And now finally we're like, uh uh-uh, uh, no. Right. <laughs> we're gonna ha- we're gonna Gucci give him- showed up his door. Right? Yeah. We you have yeah. to give credit where credit is due. The tide is changing and now we, we're able to use our voice and flex our voice in order to get the the respect that we deserve. So let's run through like we've there's so much I could talk to you about. I know. Um in fact. <laughs> but let's let's kinda start where you came in. So okay, do you remember your first show that you were like, Okay, I'm It's this hard is me to forever. say because for so long I was not getting those invitations to big shows i would say the biggest show i was going to at first was probably baby fat okay for me that that so was that was show. right so that yeah. was your first okay yeah that, that's a perfect place to start mm-hmm. because that was a moment that did not turn into the movement that we thought i know right yeah what are what are your thoughts about what happened to you know that moment of urban wear for us and by us Dapper Dan, I've just been reading all of his yeah. his memoirs, looking I just at watched all of his, his Ebro interviews. This morning. <laughs> right. And he was saying that they were too down market and maybe uh-huh. they hadn't done enough research. They couldn't align with a bigger luxury brand to help them to have a global reach. Right. And we do see that Baby Fat is back now with Forever Twenty One, but it's kind of like a lackluster um, reintroduction to to the marketplace. Yeah. I just think there's so much education. There's so much that we don't we don't. You know, know. what? That, and that's a good point. He did make that point um, on the thing I saw with Ebro too. And no one apparently is immune because honestly, Tommy Hilfiger went through that, and mm-hmm. now Ralph Lauren is going through that. Yeah, you know, it's something about once you take a luxury brand and you put it in TJ Maxx. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I mean, it, uh, and Michael Kors. Oddly enough, Michael Kors suffered for the same thing too. However, he made enough money yeah. to uh, buy Versace before. <laughs> I mean, that that company <laughs> made enough money to buy Versace before um, that started to befall him. Yeah, um, and it makes me wonder if that's why Ralph Lauren did that big, you know, piece. Did you go to that? No. Okay. You know what? My my fashion show things are starting to change now. But there are still some serious, serious issues in, in the fashion industry in terms of diversity and inclusion. We saw with the Gucci baklava sweater. We mm-hmm. saw with Montclair yeah. and the blackface, Prada with blackface. This is not just happening in, in the vacuum, stores. Yeah. You know, it's happening everywhere. Wow. So that's interesting because mm-hmm. I would imagine yep. um, that, right, you that all of the invitations would be hand delivered to your door at this point no wow no and do uh, who is her target market though are they interested in her target market are they in- of course they are are they really i don't know i think that the fashion industry gains its fuel and fire from being that exclusive thing that keeps mm-hmm. people out and it makes people want to continue to aspire to, to to take part in it if they welcome us with open arms then then what is there it's for, not for the masses it's not for yeah nobody else for. is supposed to well, have outfit well that's well <laughs> but I, I mean yes i i agree because again that is what happened to definitely Tommy, Tommy Hilfiger and what is happening now to Ralph Lauren. Mm-hmm. They have, uh, Macy's really was the death and Macy's 65% <laughs> off sales was the death of Ralph Lauren's exclusivity. Mm-hmm. And so, right. However, <laughs> at the same time, yeah. you know, when you have um, Mugler at all doing Beyonce's you know, costumes for her tours as they Dolce & Gabbana did for Madonna, etc. Mm-hmm. You do, you know, it is still on that, the level in which they want to be, right? Because yeah. the people in the front row are buying Dolce & Gabbana, yeah. maybe not in the roof. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, I, th- it but is surprising to me. We're not in the building. We're not even in the building. Beyonce will be in the building. Beyonce is right. in the building. And Beyonce stylists Beyonce. will but be in the building. Yes. But the that's enough black them. black media is not in the building. Speaking We're not media. in the building yet. Right. But we have to keep fighting and keep checking people and being like why we deserve a seat at the table. But at this point, I'm not seeking outside validation. 
and we understand that we can create things without them. We That's might true. actually be leaving them behind very soon. I was going to say, because it's not <laughs> like you, there's you. any Make them come lack. You're going to have to come see me. Yeah. Then. We're starting, an e- we started e-commerce, Fashion Bomb Daily Shop. Mm-hmm. We have a host of designers of all colors on, on our website. And we are creating that next big online I was going to say that. So, store. you know, it is to that to that thought. Um, you have right a cornucopia of, of black people in fashion right now. Right. I want to. Okay. Would you say that uh, Off White broke that door open on a higher fashion end, at least a higher price point? I would say, yeah. Because Prior Moss came right through there, like, and it's not a problem. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. I would say. Yeah. For sure. Uh, the Kanye West Virgil Blow. Right. Collaboration sort of thing. I think that Off White did. Was that? Yeah. So, what did you think? Okay, so he, those of you who know Virgil Abloh's work, know that, you know, he started taking, what was it, champion sh- uh, shirts and like, like kind of refashioning them, mm-hmm. right? Um, which is sort of kind of a con job, but it worked. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It works There's to get so him much, in the building. I mean, when you look at Balenciaga, will will sell a five hundred dollar baseball cap, and it right. literally just has Balenciaga. Balenciaga on it. And to that, you know, it's funny because I did a story about that Christian Dior bag, mm-hmm. and then I saw what show was that? You had that bag. Um, you know the the, the monogram, the big right. thirty two hundred monogram. Yeah, um, I, I can't remember what show I but, was at with that right. one. Yeah. Okay, so. So, okay, so that will open the door to how do you purchase or do you influence fashion? For me, I influence and my goal, even though I will carry a Dior bag, Mm -hmm. I wear mostly black designers. Yeah. um, Black female designers. It's important for me because Dior, Givenchy, Gucci, they don't need another quarter from us. Free free promotion. They don't need any of my money. They might not even want it. Um, This this outfit that I'm wearing is by House of Shea. She's a Brooklyn based designer whose mom actually trained under Tommy Hilfiger. So cute. Thank you. You. Hanifa makes my shoes. Hanifa Co. If you haven't heard of her, she is amazing. And one of our very own uh, painted swag, painted did swag. Several yeah, several of your pieces. Something mm-hmm. you wore at Essence. I wore her yeah. Essence. So for for me, I could obviously wear anything. Mm-hmm. But fashion is a form of it, it's making a political statement, not just a style statement, but now it's making a political statement. What do you stand for? Yeah. And if you really value our community and pouring back into it and making sure that things are for us by us then then wear it on then your back wear it and right and Represent. support it so some of the creatives that you like right now um i'm personally obsessed with dana struggles right now mm-hmm. and um uh so i want to you know but you're closer mm-hmm. so who are you like really you know fanning out about right now um Shop Oyemwen, you mean designers, fashion Well, no, designers. I mean fashion or stylist or photographers. Those of you who don't, Dana Shrugs is the one who did the uh, Diddy cover for Mother's Day, among mm-hmm. other things, but that's probably what a lot of people um, mm-hmm. know her for. Mm-hmm. But it's just bringing like a whole nother, like almost like a Helmut Lang moment, mm-hmm. you know, into black fashion. So like, who are those people for you? Now I was not expecting. It's like midnight. I just got <laughs> off a <of> plane. <laughs> I literally thought I was going to come here and talk about Fashion Bob Daily. And I'm like, oh my God. Well, I mean, okay. but so I'm much like, of what, what you. <laughs> so, but I went and through I your. No and I'm like, this is like writing a thesis at midnight. <laughs> Right, but no. <laughs> well, see, that's what everybody thinks in my show. It's like, Jill girl, is okay. I, mean, I was not ready. Is, you know, New York City. I know I'm Harvard, but I'm like, whoa. You know, um, but yeah, I am. A, I am a <laughs> fashion. <laughs> And we're just like, uh, I just wear black designers and wear what I like. No. And I have this website. Okay, but I, I mean, throw it. And like, we're just like, right. Right. Yes. right. And you this understand? is a guy. A you guy understand? is one of the she major stylists as, as well. in South Florida. A guy, she's. Uh, not oh, a man really? she makes babies that's what we say every time we say her name because everybody always is a guy then anyway um 
But yeah, so I mean, that's why I wanted to talk to you because I love fashion and I love what you do on. Uh-huh. Um, I I love the way that you mix it. Yeah. Um, in unexpected ways, and I think that that is one of the things that influences. Uh, and I want to call them the major designers, but you know, designers that may not be of our hue. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, a lot of times, I think that you know it goes without saying that. You know, little Kim completely was Marc Jacobs' muse. Yeah. Period. And, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So, where you are in that space, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Is she? I don't think Claire cares about that space. What do you I mean? I think she cares about the up and coming designers that look like her and representing them and using the platform that she has to showcase them because we're in a different time now where you don't have to get into Vogue like you want to. But you don't have to. Well, no, no, no. I'm, that, so that's what I'm there go why you were thanking Twitter and social media and all that stuff. So the website is there. And and obviously, ev- there's a lot of people drop shipping and doing all that stuff. But if she's working with specifically, that would pique my interest personally. Mm-hmm. If she's working with black designer, jewelry right. makers, I'm not a clothing person. Mm-hmm. I like accessories. So mm-hmm. if she, we know that we can go there and find all the hot black designers who are selling clothing, um, accessories, shoes, et cetera, and she kind of has the in for that, then then we need to go to the website. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We need right. to follow the page right. and find well, that information too. out. Right. Because right. I don't... You have shop, and right. then you have... St- you have Fashion Bomb Daily, and then you have shop Fashion Bomb. Yeah, fashionbombdailyshop.com. So. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, so who are <laughs> so who are your <laughs> favorite yeah. black designers right now? Other than what you're wearing right now, that is fabulous. I do love Thank it. Thank you. So, other than that, who are your favorite people that are consistent that are putting out really dope stuff, especially for all different shapes of women right now? I love Laquan Smith. Love um, as a John Pierre, my fellow Haitian sister, um, Romeo Hunt. I love Ducky Confetti, Sai Sanko, Shapo Yemwen. If you guys haven't heard of any of them, then, you know, by all means, I'll be happy to tell you more. Pyramas, obviously. Yeah. Oswald. Oswald Boatnik. Boateng. Did you yes. go to that show in Harlem? No. You know what? I had an, a speaking engagement that day, so I could not go. I love Stella John. Mm-hmm. There's, there's so many. There, Jill needs you to go to the show so she can live vicariously through you. I mean, I do. She's not but in New York. Like, come on, Claire, get it together. When I was when I was younger, I really I was so focused on getting in. I was so focused on that validation, and it didn't matter how many show reviews I wrote. It didn't matter how much I splurged on a dress. They were not letting me in. Mm. The only time I got in is when I freelanced for Italian Vogue, and I did that for three years. Right. And the reason I did that is because I wanted to get, get in. in. Right. <laughs> but I had to work so hard that I was miserable. I was covering yeah. 30 shows every fashion week. I didn't have any time to enjoy. I was just writing constantly. It's like, you know, when you be careful what you ask for because you just might get it. Right. And so now I just I just do my own thing. And it's not about them anymore. It's not about Marc Jacobs. I mean, I think Marc Jacobs is very kind to our community, though he does make some missteps. He did do that. The Bantu knots or whatever. Mm -hmm. No, it was the dreadlocks. And he credited rave culture and not Uh, black black people. (laughs) You know, so we're still dealing with those issues. But for me, it's about just creating a whole new movement. Yeah. Um, And and, and celebrating activism in, in my own way. Well, there and there are, and I think that um, I want to say Pyra Moss is probably the one that is making the most um, of a statement. Yeah, in that space, what was the that the line that he did of like uh, the all these beautiful painted like caftans and dresses that were like of church like moments was maybe like two years ago, a year and a half, two years ago. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, was the one that like really like got everybody's attention was just incredible. Yeah. So, um, so, so do you wear a lot of? Is that the way you support? Yeah, you I know, wear or and I'm, you sell. 
we pr- we oh, we, we oh, sell. We make sure that celebrities can pull and wear them. We're linking them with influencers. Um, well, I'll I'll make it to a Parma show. <laughs> you know, I'll right. make sure that we get we get that coverage, and we support in in every way that we can. But we also obviously cover the spectrum. Yeah, there really isn't anybody that that we won't cover. If it's dope, then it's on Fashion Bound Daily. Speaking of that, so Mary J. Blige, I hear got so much love. Yes. Who is styling her now? Women like she, and Micah is styling a lot of her on stage looks, and Law Roach styles a lot of her red carpet. She yeah. was the most. She is amazing. In um, <clears throat> and the, and the uh, we saw what was that that we saw was the BET award just recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When she got the the, the BET award, but yeah. you all just saw her at Essence, and yep. and Funky Daddy even called me. It was like she was. Oh yes, Funky fabulous. <laughs> we'll have Funky. Yeah, yeah she yeah. is. Fa- she was. She is. Um, her body's amazing. She wore Ralph and Rus- Russo couture. She also she's wearing Fenty. I love that mm-hmm. Rihanna has her own line now. Yeah. It, it things are definitely changing for the positive, and it's great to see people like Mary J. Blige supporting her. Have you seen? Uh, do you wear Fenty? Not yet. I have to. That's a. I'm. I'm. Go, I'm going for it. It's she's, not one of those. Where does she stop? Where does she stop? At, well, I heard that she's gonna go. She's gonna go at least till I think twelve, twelve, fourteen. What do you mean? Size. Size. Oh, oh no! I'm just like that's. I'm on a shopping hiatus right now, oh, um, um, <laughs> and that's a quite of an, an investment. But I do plan to invest in, have in you, Fenty her, her, in the accessories. In particular, yeah. the one had the line that she's doing with Louis Vuitton. Yeah, her fancy. Oh, that line. one. Okay. Uh-huh. So what her her personal line is what lingerie. Yeah. Was that she the one Savage she did before? Fenty. Savage. Okay. Yeah. Is that the one for? She has some things for us. She does have for me. Plus sizes, um, <laughs> in the bra. Yeah. But I love uh, her, the sunglasses the and the shoes. Size. Those are on my yeah. my get list. She. You know? Yeah, I could see you in her, her <laughs> shoes. Because that really, when I tell you, she was walking the streets in New Orleans. I mean, not I walking can't. the streets. She's going from event to event. Yeah. Um, <laughs> in that, you know how Rihanna wears that little tiny strappy shoe that is a six inch heel? I was just like, girl, I'm just living vicariously through you because that would never, <laughs> ever happen for me. I have again. some six inch heels at home that I'm like, I don't want to get rid of them because they're so fabulous, but they really just belong in the air. They're just Whoa. not but, <laughs> for the ground yeah. anymore. I can't. That part. I can't do the it. Legs up. They can't. So they can't. So I, I b- before I get off of that completely, because I wanted to ask you uh, about the about the bag. The the whole Christian Dior thing was mm-hmm. about the bag, and and um, if you collect, I, my grandmother, you know, told me when she gave me my first Louis envelope. Mm -hmm. that men collect watches and women collect bags. Mm. And so do you have, and when I saw that, I thought maybe, you know, that you were, you need to have certain designers that you collect Mm. because they do, they increase with, you know, with time. Yeah. Bags, not so much. I'm not really that much of a bag bag girl. You know, I'll I'll have one here or there. Shoes for sure. (laughs) I have a severe weakness for sunglasses. Um, Okay. That, that's that's one of those things, but I also you were I one give of the a first lot one of in those Gucci's. What'd you say? That that tricolor Gucci. You were one of the first yeah, ones I saw. Yeah, but yeah. I give a lot of stuff away. Like I just I have my friends come over or my sisters come over, and I just give it away because I just it's it, it gets a little bit overwhelming, and I also feel like because I'm so blessed, it's incumbent on me to 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 be a blessing. Yeah, and so I'm just they've exited my closet with. Bags and bags and bags. Of stuff. That's awesome. I just, ugh, That's a she beautiful wear thing. Flats, so we don't need to ask her. her shoes <laughs> <on>. <laughs> so now listen, you're in town to do conversations with Claire. I am. Yes. And and uh, I will be there. Awesome. And you are having a conversation with Trina and Amarla Negra. Amarla Negra, also Vanita McCollum, who is Little Yachty's mother. She wrote a book called Raising a Rapper. Oh, and cool. um, the founder of Urban Skin RX, which is one of my favorite, one of your sponsors, skincare brands. Yeah. Yes. Oh, you mm-hmm. have you are a great spokesperson. Thank you. Uh, I actually really brands. do love the. I love the products. I think they're wonderful. So, so now, how can people um, join you? 
Yes, they can get their tickets at cwcmia.eventbrite.com. It's going down Wednesday from 6 to 9 at the Betsy Hotel, which I have not been to yet, but I hear it's fabulous. It's really <laughs> lovely. And I'm telling you, we both do events. I think a guy has done some stuff there. Too. I mean, it's it's family owned. Okay. Um, it's you know it's intimate. Mm-hmm. Um, and that B bar is where um, uh, Ingrid did her. What was it? Uh, Flow Fridays. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just really sexy and you know and cute. And it's down. Uh, it's on ocean. Okay. Perfect. So you know, and the spa is really nice. They have oh. an outdoor. Yeah, you deserve to. I you deserve that. a right today. They have an outdoor <laughs> spa upstairs. And it's okay. really nice because, you you know, they have the, like, coverage and stuff. But you can, you know, be outside and have your massage and the whole thing. And it's Miami Spa Month. So, yes. Yes. Which those oh, of you. Oh, my goodness. Music to my ears. Yes. So, <laughs> Miami Spa Month, mm-hmm. high-end spas, I think they're one of them, mm-hmm. have, like, a, pack, a $99 package. Mm-hmm. So, you can get their high-end services. Oh, nice. Um, at that price. And to that, uh, since I'm there, <laughs> <laughs> on August 4th, we're doing a uh, Cocktails with Jill oh, spa nice. day at the Biltmore Hotel Okay, um, with Fabulous Girls Rock. So uh, I will be sending you all on my list the um, invitation for that. It's a daycation, staycation if you're brave. So we're going to, Fabulous Girls Rock is an organization that does, you know, really cool stuff in mm-hmm. town, brings mm-hmm. girls together. Mm-hmm. And um, so we'll do that Sunday and then we will spa on Monday. Oh, wonderful. Because <laughs> right? right. this is one thing to spa on Saturday, but it's another thing to do it on Monday. Yes. So, so listen, you have, uh, you're have you in town until? I leave Thursday. Any other special things that you're doing while you're here? Um, no, I'm just, we're doing a photo shoot on Tuesday. Special photo shoot. You yeah. guys will see it soon. Um, Who's your favorite photog? Uh, Derek Blanks. Or no, okay. or Robert Ector. I love them. Okay. Yeah. Have you ever shot with... Oh, I'd love to see your Derek Blanks. I did. The cover of my book, um, The Bomb oh, Life, okay. Derek Blanks shot love that Love that. Okay, that makes yeah. sense. Who shot the one on, that, on the flyer? On the promo we did. That was The Island Boy and Mo Shudat. Oh, it's beautiful. Thank beautiful you. Beautiful work. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, if you want to contact... And you met Dara Carter. I did. Dara yes. is on. Uh, this is her first tour. She came went, two about two years ago. She came. Oh my God! I can't remember the name of the band now. That brought that introduced us. Elements. Elements. There you go. Me. Thank yeah. you. The band. Um, and just a beautiful spirit, and just loved her voice. And so she reached out and told me she was on her first tour. And so she's in town. She is going to play us out. I'm so glad that. Um, I'm so glad that you made it. Me too. Yeah, it was supposed to be the whole show. It's just going to be uh, <laughs> us girls chatting. But I'm glad that we did get a chance to chat. And um, and then you all will be able to have a chance to come out and meet Claire um, at the Betsy. It's on Wednesday. You can go on Eventbrite. And it's Conversations with Claire Miami Beach. Yes, Convos with Claire Miami. And um, and hopefully we'll see you there. Elena the Poet. Yeah, Elena, I'm still here. <laughs> okay, I can barely even I'll, see you. Look, there. I'm still here. Oh, there you go. Uh, so, Elena, you are doing. You're with Ingrid on on August fifteenth. August fifteenth, I'm releasing my second spoken word album titled Clear Volume. I love the cover. You see, I use the cover in the promo. I, I absolutely love that cover. Thank you. Thank yeah, it's you. dope. And yeah. Ingrid B on the B side, what it's you the side to be on? Okay, well, well, can you get the mic back over to you? Right. So what you up to? <laughs> Monday nights, Miami Soul Sessions. Thursday night, the Poetry Spot. We are weekly until the end of July, and then I'll be switching my schedules up. We are bringing Mike Phillips back to South Florida. He'll be at Sunrise in Sunrise at Crave Lounge on August eighth. So just everything on the B side, on the B side, on the B side dot com. There you August go. August 15th, Elena. Yes. 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 August 15th. That will be. And you're all. Where? Where? Where is the event on the 15th? It's going to be at Ginger Bay Cafe. Ginger Bay Cafe. Oh, okay. Thursdays at Ginger Bay. Yeah. Miami on Monday nights at 1306 Crave Lounge, Sunrise, Florida. Awesome. Trying to get around the whole South Florida. Yeah. And Miss A Guy, you are doing the most is Fashion Week. Yeah. Uh, we swim, swim Week. Thank you for yes. br- letting my girls be interns. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So I, I teach in the summer high school girls, uh, well, high school students, um, journalism and broadcast, and they wanted to, um, I have had a lot of stuff I wanted to cover for Fashion Week, and I couldn't do it. And I was like, well, you girls can go and volunteer as long as you bring me back a story at least, <laughs> at yeah. least 350 words you can go. <laughs> and so uh, a guy did a series of shows. Yes, uh, and we also have some Monday night get-togethers, just a summer series. So it's like a fashion get-together. It's going to lead to a color party it's always nice. a fashion party happening with us so where is it so it's a secret location i can't just you know what it's that part look follow me just on instagram a guy that styles in broward just shout out to broward okay we in the building there you go <laughs> ah you ready to play us out diva yes yes mm-hmm. thank you babe so much for coming thank you all for Absolutely. listening and uh, i will talk to you in a few hours with james t uh love life in the 411 <gasps> take it away my dear <laughs> You must be tired of my games Like I'm tired of trying to figure me out Sorry if it's been strange Mm, Baby, I'm having these crazy doubts Maybe I'm not the kind of girl who's ready to settle down Maybe I'm caught up in your world, it scares me I'm making my way out Hello, freedom Where have you been all my life? Hello, freedom Maybe I'm gonna find myself this time Yeah, da 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 All of the love you gave But I still had to run It was a sacrifice I made Ooh, you could be the one Hello, freedom Where have you been all my life? Hello, freedom Maybe I'm gonna find myself this time Yeah, da 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 A da 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 Yeah, da 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 A da 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 Yeah, da 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 A da 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 Yeah, da 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 You never know, never really even know When it'll come and when it'll go You never know, never really even know When it'll come and when it'll go Oh, knock on your door and tell you it's over You've got to walk away And tell you it's over Love's gonna ease the pain I wake up feeling lovely Yeah, it's a beautiful day The skies are blue above me Let freedom lead the way I wake up feeling lovely Yeah, it's a beautiful day The skies are blue above me Let freedom lead the way 
Hot Talk with Jill Tracy. Always live. Always local. Always entertaining and educating South Florida. Heard every Sunday night from 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. The views and opinions expressed on Hot Talk, guests and callers, are not necessarily those of WHQT, Hot 105, or Cox Media Group. Our studios and offices are located at 2741 North 29th Avenue in Hollywood, Florida. Join us next week for more of Hot Talk on Hot 105. The IRS.